Hello and welcome to another Legion's Imperialis Deep Dive. Today I wanted to discuss the Lehman Russ Strike Squadron, and by the end of it I'm actually going to face it off directly against some Kratos and Heavy Tanks. As always, all images found in this presentation are copyright of Games Workshop and used under Fair Use Doctrine. With that being said, the Lehman Russ is kind of a tank of the line. The main thing about it, it has a longer range than a lot of the other tanks that can be very beneficial for it. You can use this in a horde of multiple things, either multiple squadrons of them. Uh, you do also get four in the base cost of a detachment. It has some very efficient weapon choices. And, and while its firepower may not be the best, it does its specific job very well. It is a scale 2 vehicle, which is the same as all the other vehicles. This is important because if an opponent ever manages to get some infantry or walkers up in base contact with it, you can still shoot out as you are larger than it. Additionally, you can uh, ignore scale 1 things when moving. It is not without vulnerabilities, however. Just like most of the other tanks, it is vulnerable to close combat, as it does have a limited close assault factor and air support. Uh, it is not very good at taking down those air support options. And if you want to read uh, more information about that or see more information, please check out my video on the air support stuff. The first question is, what are you taking as your main gun? What, am I going to take the Vanquisher or not? Uh, here are some lists of the statistics between the Battle Cannon and the Vanquisher Battle Cannon. And the first off main thing is a 7 inch additional range. That That is a very important thing to consider. It is uh, slightly vest, less versatile as it does have the anti-tank trait, however it does gain the ar armor bane trait which means that it becomes 57% better versus armor. So if you are tanking this as a dedicated anti-tank asset, your wounds go up from one fourth of a wound per model to about 0.44 per model against a 3 plus safe target. This is a drastic increase. And of note, that armor bane actually still works on the flyers. There's some calculations in the fair too. It is not very good at shooting flyers, but it can. As for the hull weapons, there's the point defense heavy bolter, which uh, has its limited uses. It's actually not very good. It's only a defensive option. But the last cannon is nearly as effective against infantry as we can see here, the, the wounds is just slightly lower than it. While it simply lacks the point defense. We'll use our last cannon here in our fight against the Kratos later on. The range is also significantly different. The last cannon has the 22 inch range and often tends to be the more versatile choice that is seen uh, by and far at large. What I'm interested here is pitting the reportedly overpowered the Russ, specifically with the Vanquisher and the Last Cannon, against the Kratos. So let's look at the math behind these four Lehman Russ versions. The, uh, the first thing to note is the Vanquisher is better in pretty much all cases, range, firepower versus armor, and it doesn't have to worry about that point defense artificially inflating the firepower value because it can't actually damage the Kratos. Also we'll use the last cannon variant and so what that comes down to is a, a firepower rating per wound of 1.1 and if you recall the lower the value is the better it is. And then our Kratos actually comes in at 0 0.79. So on paper Kratos might actually be a little bit better than the Vanquisher variant of the Lehman Russ, but I think uh, sometimes the numbers lie or could be deceiving and is an imperfect system of evaluation. Without further ado, let's go on to the showdown. 175 points, you get four Vanquisher Lehman Russes. Each of these tanks has one wound per, and again, it's 1.1 points per firepower. And then with the Kratos, it comes to 150 points. So slightly less, but there's a two of them, each with two wounds. And that's 0 0.79 points uh, per firepower. Um, 
So again, on, on paper, you're seeing the Kratos might actually have a chance. We want to uh, do that direct comparison. For the purposes of this showdown, I need to make some assumptions. Uh, one is they face off against each other on directly opposite sides of a standard 48-inch deep battlefield. And those first eight scenarios all have a 10-inch deployment zone. So we'll kind of use that as our basis. Another thing to keep in mind is the Lehman Russ do have to have a command HQ in range in order to receive some of those other orders. Lastly, it's that each player of these vehicles understands the strengths and weaknesses of both of them. And in an ideal world, you might not realize some of this stuff uh, on your first game. Now, because the Lehman Russ have slightly more points for firepower, I wanted to give them the choice of initiative. And because of this, the, the Kratos is going to have to be a lot more aggressive because it is the shorter range, um, more active version or variant of these two vehicles. So in this case, the Kratos is going to set up at the edge of their 10-inch deployment zone, while the Vanquishers have the luxury of the range. So they're going to set up at the back. And because of the size of the base, that puts them about 37 inches um, away from each other. The order of this probably doesn't even matter. But at this point, the Kratos have three options. They could march and forego a turn of shooting. They can advance. And if the Lehman Russ aren't in range, you can pick a different target to shoot at for that turn. Or three, they can hide. Maybe march behind some blocking terrain and something along those lines. But if you're doing that, you're not affecting the battlefield in any way. You are just points not doing anything. The auxiliary player has chosen the first fire order, as they want to get as many shots in as they can downrange before the Kratos get into their engagement. Uh, the Astartes can respond with uh, something that's aggressive and risky, and, and I think that's the best example for this scenario that we'll cover. So they want to advance the first uh, eight inches. Um, and that puts the tanks within 29 inches of each other. So, of note, even if the Astartes player had moved them about 5 inches, uh, they would still be valid targets for the Vanquishers. So, in an ideal world, the Kratos might have been able to move forward and hide behind terrain before shooting something else. Um, but that scenario is a little unlikely, so we'll just assume that the Kratos moved forward, shot something else, and the Vanquishers actually get a, sh a turn of firing against the Kratos um, in kind of an unrequited situation. So the Vanquishers have four dice. They hit on fours, and this averages two hits at a minus two AP. Uh, four plus save from the Kratos then averages one wound, one save. But the Vanquishers have armor base. So this rerolls the um, saved with a 50-50 odds of saving this time. And so we're looking at about one and a half wounds. This is a pretty good chance to destroy one of the tanks. So we'll actually give them the benefit of the doubt that they do. And part of that is because by the next time they're being shot at, we're going to average it out to about that three if the exact same occurs. So here we're down to one Kratos now. And because it's down to one, it's at half strength. So this lone Kratos must make a morale check. At a three plus, that's a one in three chance that it simply flees, loses any distance that it was making, and never even gets the fire on the, the uh, Vanquishers. And in that case, the, the Vanquishers or the Lehman Russ, they automatically win. They, they've done their job with one firing solution. But uh, assuming the Astartes player has accounted for this test, um, maybe they kept their commander close to the center, maybe they got lucky and passed that. We'll take a look at a turn two as if they had passed it. But here's, here's layer one of how the Vanquisher can beat the Kratos. The Auxiliary player once again chooses first fire, while the Kratos is forced to advance again aggressively. Now. <clears throat> the vehicles end up about 21 inches apart in this case, not close enough for the uh, auto cannon, but all of the last cannons can fire this turn, having 
gained that extra movement. The Vanquisher first fire results in the same uh, shot, so the same one and a half wounds, but the last cannon also gets the fire, and that's one shot, four plus with minus one AP, but that only nets about a 33% chance of a wound. So the Kratos now have taken an average of 3.33 wounds, but because we have to give some edge here, uh, we're going to assume the Kratos lives with one hit point. And part of that is because it is 25 points cheaper for the entire squadron. So we'll give it that little assumption because if it does die at that point, obviously the Vanquisher, Lehman Russ, uh, win. And then they have their additional rounds of shooting at whatever they want. So the Kratos survives with one hit point. And the Battle Cannon gets two dice at four plus to hit, resulting in one hit at minus one AP. Uh, against a save of three, in this case, that'd be about uh, two thirds of a wound. There's uh, the Kratos Last Cannon, and that's two dice at four plus. These have accurate, so we have about 0.75 hits at minus one AP, and that comes to about uh, half a wound. And then there's that Spons and Last Cannon. That's one die, four plus, for 0.5 hits at negative one. AP, and that results in 0.33 more wounds on average. And all in all, when all said and done, that average is about one and a half wounds to the Vanquisher. And it it's not really worth continuing, because it's clear that the Kratos is outmatched. Maybe they kill two of those Vanquishers, but the best they're going to do is kill two per turn that they are closing, and that's in the event that they have already passed both their morale test and didn't get the lower end, or did get the lower end of their averages of the wounds coming in. So at that point, there's no point in continuing the scenario, so let's kind of do a recap. At, at 0.79 firepower point cost, the, the Kratos dealt 1.5 wounds on turn 2, it should be noted, however, that they shot an alternative target on turn one. The Vanquisher, even though it's got that higher point cost per firepower, it dealt a total of 3.33 wounds in two turns, and it has a lot more control of the battlefield. Now, I realize this is kind of like a vacuum scenario, but it is. there's a lot we can learn about just something as this, and use it as a mental exercise to kind of figure out some of the tactics and how to support these vehicles better. In, in this scenario, I would absolutely say 100% without a doubt, Vanquish Shirley and Russ, far superior to the Kratos. And part of that is because the Kratos has to uh, have that weapons loadout that isn't always efficient killing whatever it's targeting, and it is not nearly as long range. So as the Astartes player, there's a lot of things that we ha can take away from this situation. Um, number one is you have to be aggressive. If you're going to sit back, you're just going to get shot at from those Vanquishers. And I see this as a recurring theme among a lot of the Astartes and the Marine units. Uh, their, their air support, for example. They have those better saves, more durability, the extra hit point on the Thunderhawk. Um, the option of having a legion trait that gives them extra jink and things like that. So the the marine vehicles tend to be more aggressive oriented, and with that you kind of have to rely on your saves and your hit points in order to get your maximum benefit. The auxilia tend to have safer options and can sit back. The other thing to note is that instead of having your morale test at two wounds, it's probably a good idea to add that third tank for only 60 more points, and that way your morale test occurs at four wounds rather than two. This is an increase of not only do you have to lose half your squadron, you actually have to lose 66% of your squadron before that morale test actually occurs. The other thing to keep in mind then is Maybe we ignore the Vanquishers with the Kratos. The Kratos end up being
being outmatched, outgunned, outranged. And so our Kratos should be focusing on the rest of the battlefield instead of getting into a tank battle. And because of that, I actually think I want to rescind something I said in the previous video where I was discussing the Kratos and say that auto cannons are probably a better option than the last cannons on my top build because of their versatility. Um, I have a feeling you'll see a lot of these Vanquisher Lehman Russ. And so we have to kind of evolve our builds around what we think the meta might be. Additionally, we're probably going to have to think about some alternative anti-tank options because the Kratos is definitely not it. It is outmatched. And this might come in the form of some air support. Maybe we try to take some of the, the options, uh, Fire Raptors, for example, or, or something that can deal with those Vanquishers on the back line and try to deal with the uh, extra range that they have in other means. Uh, perhaps we'll see some Deep Strike. With drop pods coming, we're going to have to rely on some alternative methods of getting our troops in striking distance. So deep strike could be one of them. Um, this can come from maybe some legion traits, or even if we're taking a legion that has uh, forward deployment for our Kratos. We, I, I think this is worth evaluating much more in detail. And I think this is going to be some of the next videos that I do on those legion-specific traits. I know there's been a lot done, but I feel there's still a lot to be discussed on that. Lastly, Battlesmith. This is a trait that is found in the rulebook, but not currently present on any of the vehicles. And this lets you ignore some of those wounds that may have occurred to the Kratos. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Battlesmith units come out. I am new to Horus Heresy, admittedly, so I don't know what there might be. Uh, leave a comment with with some things you'd like to see with that, or what you might expect. Following that, the Auxiliary have a few takeaways too. Um, sure, you can learn a lot in a losing battle, but there's still something to be won in the uh, wins. <clears throat> First off, you kind of want to hedge that range advantage. And because of that, I, I think Vanquishers are best not deployed in the center of the battlefield, like they were in this case, but at the uh, closer to the corners, maybe uh, a third of the way on one side, um, maybe even a fourth, something like that. Um, not necessarily in the in the far corners, because then you might not be able to affect some further out. But hedge that range. <clears throat> in the example, the Kratos didn't take cover, but if they had, by giving the Vanquishers a turn one advance order, the auxiliary player could have repositioned for a potential shot against either the Kratos or even something else. If the um, Astartes player had been completely passive, it's possible that with a first fire order, the Vanquishers wouldn't have had a shot. So having that turn one advance order is probably going to be a little more beneficial for you because very few things are going to be able to threaten you on turn one before you fire. The advance order allows you for the option of not only opening distance, um, or closing the distance, but also opening it against any potential threats. So say they forward deploy their Kratos, and you're further into your corner, maybe you want to get further into your corner or swing to the side so that it's not a direct shot or direct movement for the Kratos to get into that 22-inch range where it starts to outgun you. <clears throat> Another important thing is, as soon as the Kratos got to that midline where they're getting those three last cannons at 22-inch range, that's where it starts to swing. Um, so the Vanquishers have to have done that damage already. So as an Exilia player, you want to have something in that midline. You want to prevent threats from getting to that middle line where they can shoot your backline stuff. And I have a feeling that this is probably going to be a lot more important once those uh, artillery pieces get released into the game like that. So if you've got infantry or walkers or other pieces, models, detachments, things that are occupying that middle section of the board where he can't just, okay, I'm moving exactly five inches in. It's like, okay, now you have to move wholly the eight inches, and then you're going to be in 
range of those uh, last cannons. Maybe you're going to be surrounded by infantry, things like that. Force your opponent to make bad decisions. And you can do that by having long range fire support for a midline uh, infantry or walker detachment. Another thing is uh, the what ifs. So, what if the morale tested failed? What if he saves all of his wounds? Things like that. And to that, I kind of have to say dice will be dice. And it happens. There's hot dice games, there's cold dice games. But uh, the more dice that are rolled, the more likely a statistical average outcome will happen. And that's one of the things about war games. If you get into high competitive war games, it's consistency. You don't take just one um, big weapon. You would rather typically spend those points and get a medium high efficiency weapons. And that's the thing that sets apart high level player and their use of consistency and averages over high risk, high reward tactics, which can win single games, but rarely win large events and continuous games. It should seem obvious that you want to make your opponent roll defensive dice, but it you can't have them fail something if you're not making them roll it. So you kind of have to find that balance of, okay, I'm going to be aggressive enough, even though I'm playing defensively, to get those wound rolls in, to get those morale rolls in, if necessary. So, in this case, what are the last cannons? They shot once, and maybe even only on two, two of your tanks. Does that mean that the point defense heavy bolters might be a better option? Because now we know that the Astartes player might not even take the, the Kratos and or vehicle options to threat. So maybe there's going to be that deep strike, or maybe you need to have that covering fire in the form of that point defense heavy bolt. Even though they're not nearly as damaging, maybe that's something we consider and trying to split fire if we are taking that, taking that banger. And by now we need to realize that the Kratos is not likely a threat when played well. So are the enemy AT assets or anti tank assets going to be knights, titans, air support, things like that? And in fact, I feel like as an Exilia player, you are kind of forced to to all in on controlling the skies. You want to have your air support superiority, and that way you are not threatened by either the vehicles or the air support options of an Astartes player. Let me know your thoughts on this video. This was a little bit different. It was kind of a mental exercise. It was fun. I learned a lot, uh, a lot more than I expected to kind of take away from this. As always, have a wonderful day.